Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Fatal Force Tragedy of the Lone Wolf Arc. So, last place we left off, we had just stepped into the car or limo or van or something with Draviar, and we were just, you know, pounding around having a good time. And, but things are a little more serious now after inquiring about Zero. Um, hmm. I would like to know more about his past. Apparently he was a beast man who was bitten by a werewolf. So, let's, uh, see how serious or silly this episode gets. Thanks you, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the video. Alright. <clears throat> he mentioned that it was rare to see his old self a while ago. So, Zero has amnesia, but every once in a while his memories come back when he's asleep. Javier nodded slowly and turned away. He was hiding something. This music doesn't match this moment. <laughs> kind of. His memories are actually unpredictable. The recalls can happen spontaneously while he's busy playing. We had one case where it happened while he was eating. These spontaneous memory recalls only last for a really short moment, and then he just goes back to being his current childish self. He looked back at me, hoping that I could just trust his word. Well, I guess there isn't a point in asking about Zero's background now. He knows better than I do, after all. Blah. These conversations are starting to make my mouth drop really quick, really quickly. Javier flicked his ear and looked at me, concerned. Are you alright, Nary? You look pale. He touched my chin as he asked. I think I'm still thirsty. Hey, no need to be so concerned about asking. He chuckled and began digging into a strange box in front of him. Here, try this orange juice. He pulled out a bottle and passed it to me. I checked it to see what brand it was. It's just a brandless bottle. Just a plain old bottle with orange juice. Weird. No way he's made this orange juice and kept it here. What's even weirder is that it's still pretty cold when I touch it. I hesitate for a bit before drinking. It's familiar. I look at Draviar. He smiles at me. The taste isn't bad, to be honest. I took a large sip and let it sit in my mouth. It's an odd flavor, but it makes it feel sort of fresh. I'm kind of amazed by that. And it clicked in my head. Did you mix this with ginger? Did I? He winked at me. He really did, and I really like it. Though, why did he make this? Why well, go through the trouble of making this one drink for me? Because he likes you. He didn't ask to drink it with me. What's wrong? You don't like it? Oh, no, 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 no. I really enjoy it. It's, it tastes really good. Ah, I see. So do you feel better now? Yeah, much better. Thanks, Draviar. He started blushing a little under his fur. I could tell he was trying to hide it. It's really cute. So, when did you get bitten? You're hybrid as well, yeah? I was so curious about the hybrid deal. It's not an everyday occurrence to hear about anyways. Or any of this, for that matter. I hold the bottle of orange ginger juice and continue sipping as I listen to Draviar. Oh. Actually, I've never been bitten. Huh? Wait, so that means... I guess I was born with this. He was scratching his head while looking at me. Guys, we need another Linkin Park song to explain this. <laughs> so if he didn't get bitten, and he was just born with these things, then for Draviar's case... It comes from your parents? Yep. When I was a child, or I guess pup, given that's the term you humans use for canines, I was raised by my mother. I thought my mother was human until I learned that she was a werewolf. On the day she got killed in front of me, by a werewolf. I stopped my drinking when I listened to those tragic stories of his life. I can't even imagine how that feels. Someone you someone you love just killed. Right in front of you. Dead. The closest I've gotten is my mom's passing a long time ago from cancer, but even then, I had a chance to say goodbye. Javier, you've gone through so much. I'm... I'm really sorry. I mean it. I look at his face. He seems rather calm about it. Sorry about it. I mean, Paul's like... <laughs> he seems rather calm about it. No tears. Nothing. I guess he's gotten over it. Don't worry about it. It's okay. But thanks. I'm gonna save right here. So then, where's your father? He's a beast man, I assume. 
He is, though I never met him. Nor do I know where it is. Nor do I know what has happened to him. I'd ask my mother about my father. She told me that... Every time she looked at me, she would see my father. But just a different color of fur. What color? Hmm. I think blue? Dark blue? I don't remember. And my mother didn't tell me anything specifically about him except for one thing. About a certain place. His tone started to drop. I could tell he's becoming really serious about it again. I know he keeps hiding about it. I know he keeps hiding it. But right now, I think everything makes more sense. The Land of the Wolves. One of the places of the hidden world. You're still wondering whether that place exists or not, aren't you? He smirked and he began to return to his cool side. Didn't I? Or didn't you? I gave a light smile to him and continued to sipping my drink. Well, yeah, I'm still uncertain what that place really is and where it's located. But my mother would always say that one day, if I do manage to find it and manage to go in there, do not seek revenge on their people. Once again, I stopped my drinking and began to get confused with that statement. What do you mean revenge? I mean, if I do find my way in, I'm most likely going to find an answer as to what happened to my father. There's a very high possibility that he's already dead. Probably killed by someone, who knows. And you're just... fine with that? Huh? He flicked his ears and cocked his head at me. I mean, if both your mom and dad were murdered, did you ever try to find who the killer was? He sighed after I asked. You see, I already know who killed my mother, and I still remember it clearly since I was the one who killed him. As for my father, though, I didn't say he was actually killed. I am only suggesting that he might have been killed. Still, you did have revenge for your mother, so surely it would just run it would just naturally run its course once you're in the hidden world, right? You're wrong. I didn't kill them for vengeance. He lowered his voice a little bit. I actually killed him because at the time he was after me too. It automatically triggered my beast side to kill him. It was self-defense, which isn't the same as revenge. It just looks like it. I feel like I'm starting to regret asking him about this. He's been through a lot, just trying to protect himself and to survive. Javier slowly looked away from me. He's trying to avoid me. Oh dear, no. I heard his feelings, didn't I? You know, even though I know I'm considered a monster, I still feel like a human at times. I miss my mother. Crap, what have I done? For someone who's, a, for someone who's been almost, as, almost always happy or stern, I've never seen him trembling before. I was shaking, trying to hold off my thoughts. D Draviar. Oh, that's cute. Well, that hesitation, I get close to him and give him a hug. He seemed to be shocked by it. Nary. His voice felt like he was on the verge of crying. He was holding it in still. Slowly, his arms followed through in reply. He was trying to hug back. But he suddenly stops midway. His hands moved from my sides to my head and started petting me lightly. I look up at his face. He was trying to smile, though I can still feel the sadness in his eyes. I bet he's already been through a lot in his life. Oh, God. Chief, hold on! I suddenly, I, suddenly I could hear a woman screaming. Draviar pulled me up to his chest. Is it that damn wind to go? He was bracing me from the sudden impact. Ugh, what's going on? Something is approaching us. He whipped out a knife from his jacket. W what are you doing? Look, stay quiet, and no matter what happens, stay in the car. He slit his hand and quickly slid a little of his blood on my head. What was he doing? By the prayer upon the secret technique art of the wolves, hidden. So that's what he did back at the hostel. He did actually make himself invisible to others. Was he hiding me with the scent of his blood? I know you'll be able to hear me, Nary, but remember, absolutely do not leave this car. He pushed open the door, stepped out, and slammed the door. He seemed to be in a serious rush. What is going on here? Lisa, what's happening? She didn't respond. Man, I really wish I could see what's happening outside, but I can't. I forgot this car is for is, I forgot this car is for a privacy type. Bam! What the hell is that? Okay, 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 calm down. Just stay patient. Javier will come back soon. Well, no, actually, he never said he was coming back. Bam! Holy fucking hell. It felt like something just hit the vehicle. This vehicle seems to be almost like a tank. The impact seemed to have done nothing to it. 
Good thing I stayed in the car. Seems like everyone in the car is alright. Oh. He will die. Huh? What? Who was that? In a panic situation, I tried to look I tried to look around me. I swivel my head around in a panic. I would have assumed Zero given he always likes doing pranks on me, but he's not there. But did it did it just go silent outside? It's all over, dearie. I can hear it again. Who the hell is it? Ah! Draviar, is he in trouble? I can hear him screaming out in pain. I, I need to go out and see. I need something, though. I shouldn't just go out there without protecting myself. Oh, God, let me say. <laughs> Ooh, got caught up in it. I start digging inside around the seat area. Wish I could find something like a baseball bat? A metallic bat. Why in the world is it inside the car? Whatever, it's certainly far better than nothing. I push open the door and slowly exit the vehicle. I could see at the front of the car. Two beasts facing against each other. Wait, is that the werewolf who attacked me before? Why is that werewolf here? I can't do a werewolf growl. The werewolf continued to attack Draviar as he countered the werewolf with his hand. Take this! And this! Ah! Oh. These Batman sound effects. Damn, he even understands martial arts as well. I was fixated on their fighting pattern for a bit, then checked back to the car to find Lisa and Tony... gone? Zero was also not here, though I guess he might have an enchantment for the three of them. I continue to focus on the fight, except... I accidentally dropped the metal bat. It clanged against the ground, and the night suddenly fell silent. The dark brown werewolf turned as it sound and started bolting towards me. Well, shit! Zero! What the hell are you doing? I told you to stay in the car! Eh? Wait, Zero? Why is he shouting Zero's name? He's looking at me, too. The werewolf was still charging at me, but... Now I'm more confused? Wait a second, I think I know what they're doing. Javier, are you... I think I already figured it out somehow. Ah! I think I heard a gunshot from far away. I can't tell where it came from, though. Mickey! God, what the hell kind of gun is that? That looks like a, someone turned a boomerang into a handgun. That must be Mickey. He manages to shoot the werewolf from far away, I think. Zero! Now! The werewolf was hit. Was hit. Mickey must have nailed him. Suddenly, I see a boulder flying towards the werewolf. Oh, of course the little guy can lift giant rocks. Happy birthday to you! Zero was carrying it and hurled it straight at the werewolf. The stone slammed the werewolf, sending it sideways and driving it down into the ground. What in the world did I just see? Draviar still stood there. Judging by his appearance, he seemed pretty satisfied with the result. Suddenly, Draviar turned around and walked up to me, picking up the metal bat that I had dropped on accident. Don't worry about it, bud. There's nothing to worry about now. He lightly poked my head, and I could feel something light go down my body. It seems I've returned to being visible again. So, what now? I asked. Draviar gave me his charming smile and turned back to walk back to the werewolf. Draviar raises the bat and gives it a swing. And it turned into a huge sword. It feels like watching an action movie, except now, real. I could feel the trembling air down on my skin. The amount of euphoria going down, going down me was immense. I'm certainly never going to forget this day. Javier pointed his sword to the werewolf that was still on the ground, unable to stand. You want to kill him, Javier? I asked, and I mean that's probably a stupid question, but at least I, at least now I know who's who's the one who's bit. At least now I know who's the one who bit me. No, I need to do some judgment first. Hello, thumbnail for the video. <laughs> Let me save it right here. This is awesome. This is a good episode. He held the sword across his face, resting one hand on the end of the blade and his other on the handle. The sword's blade was like a mirror, reflecting the light to the werewolf who seemed to have been trying to avoid looking at it. Judgment! Witches scream. Javier leapt backwards suddenly. He seemed to have been trying to avoid something. 
the atmosphere was changing. I don't know how I don't know how I know, but I can feel something sinister happening. Time is stopping again. Wait. Again? Everyone, take cover! I have no idea what he's talking about, but I'm not going to bother questioning. I began to bolt away. Within a second, I was about to realize why. A massive lightning bolt struck everywhere around the area. Oh, God. Fuck. Run. Just keep running. Just keep running. Then I trip and fall. Shit, 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 shit. I can see a huge lightning bolt blazing towards me. I'm gonna die. Neri! Javier grabbed me by my arm and hauled me away, just barely avoiding the lightning. He saved me. He was carrying me like a baby. My face was squished up against his chest and I can hear his heartbeat. It feels like I'm flying. He was gripping onto me tightly, making sure I wasn't going to fall as he was bounding. He stopped running and took cover under an area where the lightning could not strike. Not far from there, not far from where we left the car. Now I'm wondering about the lightning. Is it some sort of enchantment? Is everyone okay? I start looking around the area that still had lightning. Meanwhile, Draviar put me down slowly. Lisa, Tony, and Zero, we need to save them. Don't worry about them. They know how to handle situations like this. He explained. He looked back to the lightning struck area. Yeah, kinda. Mickey! You're late. Gah, hey! At least I did the job properly, even from a distance. Yeah, that's fair. Your aim is quite impeccable. Draviar gives praise to Mickey, and he, it seems Mickey trying to hide his blushing. Now that I think about it, though, how the heck did he even get here? Oh, <laughs> Zero's behind Mickey, who's just sleeping inside some kind of bag. Damn, Zero can somehow go from yeeting boulders and watching lightning bolts coming streaming down from the sky to asleep. Just like that. Mickey, how far were you when you made that shot? Huh? What do you mean? Considering that Zero was already here, that means you already were alerted of what was going to happen. Mickey's shocked, Mickey shocked and flicks his ears. Javier, still looking at the never-ending lightning, put his hand on my muzzle, on his muzzle, thinking. Not far, just two kilometers from here. Jesus Christ! Made a fucking trick shot with a pistol from over two miles away. <laughs> what? That's extremely damn far! I don't know how any handgun can properly... I don't know of any handgun that can properly hit a target at three quarters that distance, let alone hit a target perfectly in a group of people. Is he using a special handgun for sniping? Oh, and as for why I eventually got here, after I took the shot, I felt that something wasn't right, so I just rushed over. I knew things were going to get even more problematic when I heard Draviar shouting, so I only managed to grab the closest person to me. Which was Zero. I mean, <clears throat> which was Zero? Yep. Though Lisa and, though Lisa and Mr. Lane... And Mr. Lame? Though Lisa and Mr. Lame Four Eyes were rushing to go inside the car anyways. Four Eyes? Maybe he's referring to Tony. So, Lisa and Tony are so Lisa and Tony are safe? I mean, maybe. I'm not sure about the lightning that's continuously nailing it over and over again. Oh, don't worry about it, they're fine. That car is pretty resistant against lightning strikes. Draviar, this is like the lightning is like an enchantment? I asked and Draviar started to approach the lightning. Probably, though it's better suited to call it a curse. A curse? Well, do you know the stories of the legendary Blair Witch and how it ended? And not the movie version, by the way. Yeah, I was about to mention that. Indeed, I watched that movie before. Blair Witch. Oh, Jesus, that's creepy. The backstory for the film is a legend fabricated by two people, which is detailed in The Curse of the Blair Witch. The legend describes the killings and disappearances of some of the residents of Blair, Maryland. The legend, huh? A fictitious town on the site of Burkittsville, Maryland, from the 18th to 20th centuries. Residents blame these occurrences on the ghost of Ellie Kedward, a Blair resident accused of practicing witchcraft in 1785 and sentenced to death by exposure. The curse of the Blair Witch presents the legend as real, complete with manufactured newspaper articles, newsreels, television news reports, and staged interviews. There were filmmakers who disappeared, but their equipment and footage were discovered a year later been made into movies. What the heck? Hmm. Something different with this information. What's the difference? Well, the real one is much more sinister. Once they scream, everything begins to crumble. The witch's scream curse. It's the witch's hollering curse, actually. Which was what you heard earlier, just before the lightning started coming down. How are we going to stop it? I asked, and I slowly get up next to Draviar. 
simple. He raised his hands up to his chest and put them in a position as if he was ready to clap. I begin to think of a solution, and suddenly it clicks. He said the solution is simple. It's probably not the first thing that people think of or realize being, being the situation feels overpowering and requires a lot to end. But think about it. When people get angry and scream, the quickest way to stop the problem right then and there? By the prayer upon thee. To have the sound stop. Secret technique art of the wolves. Dead echo. He clapped. The lightning stopped instantly. And just like that, all the noise in the night had stopped instantly. I blinked several times. That is weirdly surreal. It's like the magic show where a rabbit is inside a hat and after a single tap, it disappears from the hat, but on a far, far grander scale. Ah, that is Alarm Chan, letting me know that today's episode has come to an end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!